Russia sees return of Iran's lethal weapons to use in Ukraine. Reports suggest that supply chains stemming from Iran have been used to smuggle a large amount of weaponry to Russia as the country prepares for another offensive in Ukraine. An investigation by British newspaper The Guardian alleges large numbers of rockets and missiles were transferred from Iraq and Iran with the help of Iran's weapon smuggling networks. The transfer includes advanced anti-aircraft systems such as the S-300 and its Iranian-made analog, the Baber 373. Various anti-tank missiles and multiple rocket launchers, previously operated by Iran-backed Shia militias in Iraq, were also sent. The Guardian quotes sources within Hashd al-Shabi, an Iraqi military organization that allegedly transferred some of its weapons to Iran on March 26, 2022. According to the sources, the weapons were subsequently loaded onto Russian and Iranian ships in the Caspian Sea. We don't care where the heavy weapons go because we don't need them at the moment. Whatever is anti-US makes us happy a source within Hashd al-Shabi is quoted as saying in the Guardian report. Iran purchased a large number of S-300 systems from Russia in 2007. Before deliveries could commence in 2015, the development of Baber 373 began. Reported as having similar capabilities to the S-300, the Baber 373 was finally adopted in 2019. Large numbers of S-300 systems, operated by Ukrainian armed forces, were credited with playing a major role in denying Russia air superiority during its invasion of Ukraine. Various NATO countries supplied additional S-300s to Ukraine since the beginning of the war. Since the early 2000s, Russia has retired some of its Soviet-era S-300 stocks, as well as stopped its production in favor of the S-400, a heavily upgraded version of the system. However, multiple reports have indicated problems with Russia's air defense network near its border with Ukraine. On the first day of the invasion, Russia's Milorovo air base was struck by what appeared to be Ukrainian long-range missiles. Russia also admitted that Ukrainian helicopters bombed an oil depot within the country. In early March 2022, following the first week of the invasion, U.S. defense officials said that vast majority of Ukrainian Air Force's operational aircraft were still intact. Although that capability is expected to have diminished under intensive Russian bombardment, there are reports that Ukraine has retained some operational aircraft and is managing to perform combat missions. Israeli-made weapons are heading to Ukraine. As NATO member states announce that they are shipping modern weapons to Ukraine, Israeli-made weapons are also on their way, even as Jerusalem walks a diplomatic tightrope following Russia's invasion of the European nation. On Sunday evening, the Netherlands announced that it would send 50 Panzerfaust III anti-tank weapon systems with 400 rockets and 200 Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. Amsterdam will also supply 100 sniper rifles and 3,000 additional munitions. The Army Recognition website said that all the military equipment and weapons will be transported to an Eastern European country by American C-17 transport aircraft, which departed from Eindhoven Air Base and once on the ground, will be transported by road to Ukraine. The Panzerfaust III is a man-portable rocket-propelled grenade that can penetrate 900 mm of steel armor or 700 mm of explosive reactive armor and destroy tanks such as the Soviet T-72 and T-80. Manufactured by Germany's Dynamit Nobel Defense, a subsidiary of Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense System, the Panzerfaust III at anti-tank weapon is expected to arrive in Ukraine to replenish and boost the stockpiles of weapons able to destroy Russian armor. While Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel's Defense Ministry had no comment, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Saturday that he had authorized the Netherlands to send Ukraine the military equipment. Germany did not need to ask for Israel's approval to transfer the weapons because the plant in Burbach was only acquired by Rafael in 2004, and Berlin had been financing the development of the weapon since it was first introduced in 1973. 
In a change of a long-standing policy, the German government said on Saturday, the Russian invasion of Ukraine marks a turning point. It threatens our entire post-war order. In this situation, it is our duty to do our utmost to support Ukraine in defending itself against Vladimir Putin's invading army. Germany stands closely by Ukraine's side. Subject to rising criticism, the German government was forced to abandon its practice of not permitting the transfer of lethal weapons to conflict zones. With the policy shift, Germany will send 1,000 anti-tank weapons as well as 500 US-made Stinger anti-aircraft defense systems to Ukraine. The Stinger Man Portable Air Defense System Manpad, is able to destroy low-level flying targets such as helicopters, UAVs, aircraft and cruise missiles at a range of up to 4,800 meters, approximately 3 miles. Israel has been trying to strike a balance between Russia and Ukraine, and on Sunday night Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is said to have declined to sell weapons after he was asked by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to Cannes Public Broadcasting, when Zelensky asked for military assistance, Bennett responded with diplomatic politeness. Jerusalem has in the past stopped the United States from selling Ukraine the Iron Dome missile defense system in an attempt to preserve its close ties with Russia, which is a key player in Syria, where the IDF is carrying out airstrikes against Iranian and Hezbollah targets.